I think there, there was somebody's question earlier but, but about uh, the contract that I wrote for Sausage Party. Yes, I wrote all um, all of these because you can actually make your contract for, for a different collection of NFT. The general one is just kind of straightforward, but you can actually make it do certain things that are different than other people. You can even restrict it to be transfer. Um, and, and I kind of want to do that eventually with one of our fun project. You can restrict people to transfer it so you can't trade it. You can't speculate on it and stuff like that. So I can give you guys uh, an NFT um, and you can't trade it. And it's kind of like a, some 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 people want to do that for kind of like Pope as in proof of attendance. Uh, so like, you know, if you go to a conference, I give you a proof of attendance. I don't want you to trade that. You know, I want it to be always be bound to your your account. Your account. And you can make that happen in the <laughs> smart contract. So the the whole thing when when I try to explain to people what a, a smart contract uh, and NFT what 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 we're looking at right now, I usually try to say that this is kind of like a uh, a vending machine. I write the logic of what it should take in, like you know, like a vending machine. So you write the instructions for the vending machine. Yeah, yeah. Somebody it's probably sitting there coding it or, or mm -hmm. even on the software side or even on the hardware side, they decide that if you put in a quarter and you spin the thingy and now the machine take your quarter, it should give you back something. It should give you back like a, a can of Coke or something. This is a gumball machine. Is a gumball machine. <laughs> yes. Spin the thing. Sp yeah. Oh, right, right, right. It's been <laughs> usually too long. on a Coke machine. You like press the buttons. Yes. Yes. I'm still stuck in the nineties <laughs> where you, I don't know. You do stuff very manually. <laughs> um, yes, you put it in, you press a button, and you get a can of Coke or a gumball, whatever it is. And I usually a smart contract on Ethereum is kind of like that. I program, I write the instruction saying that, okay, now I take in, here's a mint price. How much you should take in? I take in 0.05 Ether. Mm -hmm. If you give me 0.05 Ether, I will give you an NFT back. And now it's programmatically there. You can go there and check to see if the code is correct. So this is not a black box. So this box is all public code. Machine. Yeah, this is something that you can verify that that's you're going to get something back. And I and think that's what's just, powerful about just it. to clarify. You had to verify your code to make it public. Yes, yes. So when you I, had to verify your code on the blockchain. Yes. In order to make it publicly visible for everybody else to be able to see. Yes. So not all smart contracts are going to be visible. Yeah. Um, just so you know, but very many of them are. Yeah. If you deploy a, a smart contract on an EVM um, uh, blockchain, most likely you can you, you have something like Etherscan or some other block explorer that you can go check it out. And when you check it out, uh, you can if it's a contract that somebody verify, uh, meaning that they upload the, the source code somewhere where it ver it match up with the byte code on in the blockchain um then then it will show up on on one of these blockchain explorer so does it cost you anything to verify your code no it doesn't okay it doesn't cost anything um but it's usually good and i think that's why the idea of blockchain and smart contract is is pretty cool because it's the idea that i can have a vending machine that kind of lives out there that you can verify what the vending machine does before you make a purchase or before you interact with it. And you and can make sure the vending is, machine is going to yeah. work in the way that you expect it to work. Yeah, because you can't trust anyone. And I think that's, it brings us and to And there have though. been definitely smart contracts out there and NFT projects out there yeah. that have rug pulled. Yes. That have done some sketchy shit. Yes. And so this is a way that, yeah, if, this if the, by reading the source code, yeah. So it, it does require you to understand how the code works. However, if a project is popular enough, mm -hmm. you're pretty much guaranteed that there will be p knowledgeable people reading the source yeah. code yeah. who are unassociated with the project. Um, so that's generally the assumption is there that you can trust it if it's popular enough and yeah. then the, the code is public. And, and you have to also know uh, or understand that not just NFT that lives on a blockchain, but other tokens and other protocol and, you know, allows you to like Uniswap, SushiSwap, one of those things that. If we launched Fishcoin. 
yeah or we launch fish coins which we will probably on polygon um it, it some of it's these things trading. millions and billions of dollars get locked up or or flow through the smart contract these vending machine so when you're dealing with that like sausage party club who cares right i mean like maybe a few hundred dollar thousand dollar flows through it nobody cares nobody buzz nobody <laughs> cares right but if you have millions of dollars billions of dollars this was board ape through, club? Board ape, board ape yacht club? actually i want to talk about that real quick yeah. after this but if you have million and billions of dollars flowing through these vending machine you know that somebody's gonna want to verify and that probably a lot is, of somebody's yeah a lot of people are gonna ver need to want to verify that hey am i and i do that too to nft project because i i'm more on the technical side He's a nerd. is that sometime like back maybe six months ago when a lot of like these minting you know scam whatever and i'm always like before i mint anything because i'm frugal and i'm like I'm, i don't want to spend money on this and if i spend money it better be good so I usually go through their source code, make sure that, you know, I, I know certain things to look for uh, to to see if they're doing things properly or not. Because, I mean, I can technically have something right here where, you know, I can, you know, rug somebody. I can change some some variable. Um, and when you say early, you say source the vent, these vending machine, a.k.a. smart contracts are immutable, but the variable of it can be changed. I, I wanted to write a yeah. thing on that because I, I know that you do. Yeah. I know that you can. Um, so I wanted to talk more more in depth about that. Yeah, the variables can be changed in the vending machine. So I can say that, hey. So you he know, could I'm gonna, increase the price or yeah, decrease, increase the price the price the price. decrease the price of the sausages at any point. Yes, yes. So and if you wanted to suddenly make them cost yeah. an entire ETH each, you could. Even right. though they're only 0.05 right now. Right. So for Only. for for instance, how many hundreds of dollars is that you know, for? Point? For instance, if you were to look at my smart contract for a sausage party, you see max supply right here, right? And max supply is very important because it dictate how how scarce something is, even though they're you know most of these things are just made up scarcity uh, for people to speculate on. But it is important, like you know, you you can't release something and be like, there's only ten of these you should buy it now because it's valuable and then next you week you're, your people. Uh, and next week you're like no just kidding the max supply is now 20. <laughs> so now you kind of you know uh, you screwed over your initial buyers yes. because you've made it way less valuable than it yes because now was. there's more supply to be had um and the you know supply demand uh so some project like uh the board ape which is um probably one of the most if not the most uh popular and well-known projects out there i think last time somebody i read a tweet somebody was talking about how technically they could go in and mint more apes so they technically could have more than ten thousand. Um, uh by they you mean the contract owners the contract right? owner yes not the contract just anybody owner. yeah 